My hair is laid like Aretha Franklin on David Letterman singing Rolling in the Deep. Yes, God. Yes. Today I'm going to be doing a review on Aretha Franklin's new album and I'm about to go in so grab a seat and let's get to it. Let's just get into this review. I'm not going to go in too much on Aretha Franklin. I think she did her part. I think this album was effortless in more ways than one. But she definitely sang and put her heart and soul into every last track. And I was thinking we could go by track, by track, by track, and then talk about the album as a whole. So let's just get into that. Oh, uh, track one, which was At Last. I think it was a beautiful rendition, like I said, effortless. I felt like it was so effortless that she was singing the song on the toilet. Now, meaning that it just flowed right through. This seems like a song that she had been singing like forever and you know the song at last has been out there since Jesus came and she sang the song beautifully. Now there was auto tune on her voice in one little spot which was very annoying. It didn't really need it there. I was wondering why it was there. It was like looking at a pimple on some boy's face that's trying to talk to you at Walmart. Just highly annoying. But at last was a beautiful rendition and I do like it. Oh, uh, track two, which was Rolling in the Deep. I thought this song was great. You know, uh, I had my copy, my Aretha Franklin CD copy, uh, special order, like I already purchased it when I got Rolling in the Deep off of iTunes. And there was this huge debate on iTunes going back and forth, whether Aretha Franklin had auto-tune on her voice, whether she did or she did not. I think people are really confused about auto-tune and pitch correction of two different things. Yes, Aretha Franklin did have auto-tune on her voice on this song and actually throughout the whole entire album. But this auto-tune that is really uh, annoying, I have to keep saying annoying because that's the only way to describe it, it is highly annoying on Rolling in the Deep, is that it's just too much. It's too, too much. She does not need auto-tune on her voice. She can already sing. The roles that she does naturally that people try to copy does not need to be hindered. It does not have to be hidden. It is absolutely everything. And the auto-tune on the song is just too, too much. I was actually hoping when I first heard it that this was just something that they were playing around with and it got leaked that this was not a finished project and I was hoping and praying that it would not be the same way on the actual album but Jesus did not hear my prayers, he did not perform a miracle and this is what we have. A song that is absolutely fine. The production on this song is beautiful. Her vocals on the song is beautiful. It's just the auto-tune is me messing everything up. It's just too much. Could have done without it. See, I had heard the song before by Adele, but it wasn't anything to me. Now that Aretha Franklin has done it, I want to know the song, and I actually know the lyrics now. I mean, hey, it's, it's still a great song. Track three, A Midnight Train to Georgia. Now, I've never liked Midnight Train to Georgia. Never have until Aaron Neville did it. And I really need to see the credits for this song because it sounded like Sissy Houston was singing in the background or doing some type of ad living. And that's all I'm going to say on that right now. Uh, other than that, it was a very fun song. The thing that I am seeing throughout this album is that she is just having fun. And Midnight Train to Georgia, it's very upbeat. It isn't slow and sad like a lot of versions out there. But it's a very fun song, and you can hear it when you listen to it. Now, was it just me, or was that Carrie Hilson singing in the background? Because, you know, she, you know, hang on. Uh, okay. But anyway, but the very fun, 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 fun part about this song is when Aretha Franklin said he sold his raggedy hoopty of a car. Whoop! That got, I got all my life. Like, no joke. All my life. Track number four, I Will Survive. That song right here, that song right here was everything. I went from straight gangster to straight dancing in the club with Rainbow. As long as I know how to love, I know I'll stay alive. I've got all my life to live. I've got all my love to give. And I I 
got my absolute life until we got to the breakdown where Destiny's Child, I'm a Survivor, comes in. But it's not, it's not constructed well enough. And it was like it was done on one take because how Aretha Franklin had to sing over it to make it blend better was very obvious. We're going to come back and talk about production, but y'all could have cleaned that up much, much better. That's all I'm saying. Number five, people. I was so, so happy to see this song on the album because I have heard it by Barbra Streisand and I've always thought it was a beautiful song. And Aretha Franklin did do it justice. There's really no word to describe it because it's just a beautiful song. That's what it is. It's just that. A beautiful song. I can't say anything else on that. Number six, No One, um, Alicia Keys' song, No One. I was not looking for a song from Alicia Keys to be on this album. I was hoping for a little bit more of like Mariah Carey or something like that. But we got Alicia Keys. I guess she needed help or something. So as soon as the song came on and I heard the uh 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 oh, uh, uh, I was like, okay. But when Aretha Franklin started singing like three seconds in when her voice started, I said, come on, Riri, because you knew she was about to blow. And the thing about Aretha Franklin is that she does not have to show off. All she has to do is just let it go smooth sailing. And that's what she did on this song. And she sang it beautifully. It was just, this is the way the song is supposed to be sung. No one, I mean, she sang the song so sweet. I felt like she turned it into a gospel song, okay? I got saved today. Yes. Yes, I did. Amen. Number seven. This song will have to be my favorite song simply because it was the one that I kept playing and it is track seven. My favorite number. I'm every woman. Forward slash. Respect the two intertwined. Oh my goodness. I love, love, love this song. The production that was used on this song should have been used through the whole entire album. Yes, this song had me, oh, the way, the way she was singing, I'm every woman. And then it went right into respect. It was so, I was, even though I knew the song, they, they were going to be put together, I was not ready for respect to come in the way that it did. And then it was intertwined so nicely. And then she went right out of respect and she added some more words that went right back into um, I'm every woman. I was just floored. I was ready to twerk. For the Lord. I, I guess. <laughs> Track 8, Teach Me Tonight, was very, very, very nice. I like the instrumentation. And I keep going back to production. I would have loved for Aretha Franklin to have that live instrumentation throughout the whole album. The whole album. But this track sounded so much like Aretha. This is a classic. Very much a classic. I love that song, uh, Teach Me Tonight, Track 8, whoever. Who was that by? I don't know. It was a great song. Track 9, uh, You Keep Me Hanging On, was very popish. Very pop. Very pop. I guess that's another club song. It, it was a great song. Not one of my faves, but yeah, it was it, it was a great song. And the only reason I'm saying it's not one of my favorites is because, again, production. Track 10, Nothing Compares to You, uh, Sinead O'Connor. I like this song and I did, when I was listening to it, I did not even know it was the same song because originally I know the song from Prince. And even though I just said I like the way the live instrumentation sounds for Rita Franklin, the live instruments in this song was too much for this album. Had they kept it going all the way through, it would have not been a problem for me. So again, this is not one of my favorite songs. It sounds slowed down. It, it, it's, it's 
just like it slowed down but trying to go fast. It was just, you know, some people have their favorite tracks and some people have their dislikes. This is a dislike for me. The version Prince did, the live version that I've heard by Prince, if you listen to them back to back, you'll kind of see what I'm saying. Her version is good, but if there was a competition, Hughes would win. I'm just saying. No disrespect to the queen. So now that we've talked about all of that and we've talked about the songs and Aretha Franklin, you will always be queen of soul. You will always just be queen because no one can slay like you. There are people that are entertainers, but you know, Aretha Franklin is a singer's singer. She can sing. She cannot sing, she can sing. And nobody can take that away from her. With that being said, let's talk about production and let's go in on them so I can let them know what time it is. Okay, let me just grab my glasses. Okay, and while we're at it, let me just... God, wet hair is not all that. You know, I see a glare. I see a glare. Um, you know, I can read without glasses. It's okay. I can read, but I will hold them just so you get the gist. Um, people on the production committee for Aretha Franklin's album, I just want to ask you a quick question. Why? Why? Why did y'all do this to me? I'm not upset. I'm not sad. I am hurt. And I am hurt because this is the queen of soul. And y'all got her out here. Sounding like a his hit. Aretha Franklin does not need auto tune. You guys got auto tune all the way on this. You guys got auto tune just in this little bit of an area. When I know if anything needed to be done was pitch correction. Okay, I dibbled and dabbled in the studio too, so I know what I'm talking about. The whole auto tune thing. The only time the auto tune sounded good on her voice. It's when she was singing, I'm Every Woman. Now that was an auto-tune song. But y'all have auto-tune. I feel like the people on the production was very disrespectful. Because anybody can hear that robotic sound and hear that it does not sound right. And it's not Aretha Franklin. Some people can have auto-tune on their voice. Some people can can't. And Aretha Franklin is one of those that can't have it on her voice and also does not need it. I know that you guys were trying to get everybody to come together. The young crowd and the old crowd to come together and listen to this album. But it just sounds bad. Not only do you guys have this auto-tune on her voice making it sound like she cannot sing, but you also have this synthetic music. Was this album rushed? I really want to know. I want an explanation. Aretha Franklin, did your grandson come to you with his MacBook Pro and say, Grandma, look what I can do. And you guys sat up all night one night and recorded all these songs and he did this to you. I want an explanation why it sounds like this. Did you get some bad news? Are you about to die? And was this like a rush thing and you just didn't have time to listen to your songs? Because I'm not understanding why. It sounds so bad. The music. When I said synthetic, for those of you who do not know, a synthesizer equals keyboard. If you go and get the keyboard, and I'm not talking about some of the new keyboards today that have the really good sounding looped drums on them. I'm talking about you go back in early 2000s and the late 90s and you get a keyboard and you press the drums and it has that that sound was all the way through this album. Except for those last few tracks where, like, I'm not understanding. Was Pharrell busy? Pharrell is not Aretha Franklin and he had live drums and good sounding music backing him up. I'm not understanding why it sounded so bad. I, when I first got rolling in the deep off the album. The album had four stars. 
now the album has, when we have all the songs, we only get have three and a half stars. That should tell you something. Aretha Franklin should never pull anything less than a five star album. But y'all got her up here on iTunes with a three and a half star album and it's probably gonna go down even lower because it went from four and now it's down to three and a half. So what do you think is gonna happen? I am very upset because it is disrespectful. I felt like this was self-sabotage. And this album was not ready to be put out. It reminds me of the album that they put out of Michael Jackson right after he died. The music was good, the vocals were okay, but it was not ready to be released. This album was not ready to be released sounding like that. And I have to give it to y'all because this is Aretha Franklin and I must support Boy's Head. I must support Aunt Riri. Don't you understand that? But I feel really bad being a supporter when your production sounds like crap. You know, some of you may say, well, it's done like that because she wants to reach a bigger audience. Listen, Aretha Franklin is in her own box or she's in her own world. She's in her own bubble. I thought the point of Aretha Franklin putting out another album was to show how everybody else is supposed to do music, not put out an album and have her music sounding like everyone else's music. I do not feel like this album sets her apart from anybody else like Adele or Alicia Keys or Beyonce. It just, and you want me to be honest? Yeah, I know I'm probably going to get some dislikes, but... Beyonce's last album production is much better than Aretha Franklin's production. We are talking about production. We are not talking about singing. We are not talking about lyrics. We are talking about the people that are sitting behind the board and the computer pushing the buttons. Because I would never ever want Aretha Franklin to put out an album that sounds like that ever again. It's very hard to ignore the production when you have these great vocals and this terrible music. Like I have my headphones on and I'm trying to listen to Aretha sing the song, yet I'm hearing this Like no one wants to hear that. Bumping up against vocalists. That is so plain. We do not do synthesizers anymore. There are so many loop packs out there. Okay, this, this album could have been so much more than it is. And like I really do want an explanation. I really do. I want her to come out and I want her to say, yes, I just woke up one morning and I called everybody and I caught my nieces and my nephews and my grandchildren and my children and I told everybody to get their laptops together and I was going to record some songs and they made the music for me. I want to know why it sounds like this so I can have a good explanation because I'm just not understanding why Aretha Franklin's music sounds like this. I would have much rather heard Aretha Franklin play the songs on piano and just sung along to the piano without anything else. Without anything else. I would have much rather gone to it. It should be more. It should be much, much more. And I want y'all to know that I'm not taking anything from Aretha Franklin because she has lightened up my day with this album. But I'm just so upset at the production and how this, how the music sounds and everything backing her up. I mean, there's just certain places that are chopped, certain places that could have been cleaned up more. Just so much more that could have been done and it was not done. And I just think it's disrespectful to her career. And, I, you know, I, I've said that already. I keep saying that. I just want to get that point across. But Aretha Franklin is everything. She will always be everything. And that's all there, that there is to it. So, y'all that was on the production company, y'all need to be kissing Aretha Franklin's feet, her boots, her wrists, and her butt for giving y'all this job because she helped y'all out at the end of the day because Aretha Franklin does not need to put out another album. And with that being said, I'll leave y'all with this. Aretha, do you think Beyonce owes you an apology for not addressing you as the Queen of Soul? 